Hi and welcome to Dasmore Wargaming. In this video I'm going to cover how I paint Auric, or in this case, Crawlboy's skin tones, more specifically faces. I'm going to start this tutorial where I left off with the last one, um, so if you haven't already checked that out I really recommend that you do so. That will get you to this point you can see here. All of our pre-shading is done and we've mapped out where our highlights are going to fall. So once you're at this point, Grab your paints and brushes and let's begin. So in this first step I'm going to use Militarum Green contrast paint. Not only does this look great over the pre-shading and highlight mapping we did before, but it's also a fantastic way to further map out your highlights for layering in the next few steps. I'm just using this paint directly from the pot and covering the area I'm focusing on. I'm trying not to go outside of any of the lines um, as it's harder to tidy up later on with all that uh, pre-shading and highlight mapping we did earlier. With this paint you can still see the highlights through and if you wanted to you could just leave it like this. Uh, once it's dry it looks pretty good actually. Now that the contrast paint has dried, you can see what effect you get by just going directly over the pre-shading and highlight mapping we did before. As I've already said, I think if you were just to leave it at this stage, it still looks really good. What I'm doing now is using some slightly thinned down Strachan Green and I'm just applying it to all of the raised areas. I keep some Death World Forest to hand as I find it great to touch up any areas you go wrong on. And I have some thinned down just to do small blends between the contrast layer and the Strachan Green layer, where the Strachan Green sometimes a little bit too bright. I also think it's quite important to note as well that when I'm thinning down any of these paints, I am just using water for this. So as you can see now, all of that Strachan Green layer has dried and has really exaggerated the model's facial features. Now we want to bring some life into the face. To do this, I will take some thin down Screamer Pink. You want this to be sort of a glaze consistency. Um, and I'm just going to glaze onto the nose, ears, cheeks and bottom lip. Uh, I normally don't do the top lip on models with this, um, just the bottom one. But as there's quite a lot of detail in this particular model's face, I am going to add a little bit there. Um, putting this colour on very subtly and very thinly will give some life and warmth to the model. Now the glazing has dried, you can see how subtle it really is, but it will bring life to the face once the model's finished. I may use more of the Screamer Pink glaze to keep reinforcing the colour as I progress through the model. It's best to use your own judgement on how much or little you use of this, or if any at all, and to be honest it, it's just down to your own personal preference. Now I'm going to use some thinned down Nurgling Green. I'm just going to go over the model catching all of the sharpest detail on the face. The technique is similar to what I did with the Strachan Green. And again, if you go a little bit too much with the Nurgan Green, you can knock it back with a glaze of some of the Strachan Green or Death World Forest. So once all of the Nurgan green is dried, I now want to go back in and reinforce some of those shadows. For this, I'm going to use Corvus Black. I use this a lot for adding shadows to skin tones. I thin it down quite a lot, a bit more than what I have been uh, with the other paints. Um, you want it really, really like, like a, a shade, basically. If you aim towards sort of a Citadel shade, 
then you you get it towards it. Even a bit thinner would work. Um, and what you want to do is you want to use it as a precision wash. So only applying it to the areas you want this cold shadow to be. What I do as I'm doing this as well is if there's any pooling, I use my brush to soak up any excess wash. So with the shadows done, I'm now going to take some thin down open grey and a fine brush. Um, now with a steady hand and your arm braced against your work surface, uh, I'm just going to uh, dot the eyes with this. The paint should be thin enough to run from your brush onto the model just by touching the eye. If you do make a mistake, um, leave it to dry and follow the previous step, dropping some thin corvus black. This will darken the socket, hiding any mistakes. Now with some thinned shabdi bone, I'm going to pick out the teeth. Once again, if you make any mistakes, just use some thinned corvus black to drop into the area and it should hide the mistake. Now on this final clip, it really is a optional extra really. Uh, I'm just using some of the same thinned down corvus black that we used to do the shading. I'm just going to put a little line down the centre of each eye. So there you have it. That's our Crawl Boy face all finished. I think the key takeaways are just to keep all your layers thin, to use glazes to smooth out any transitions, use that pre-shading and highlighting to guide you, I think the big one is to don't be, af be afraid to make mistakes and just let the miniature guide you. Um, yeah, thanks to everyone for watching. Um, if you could like and subscribe, do the same over at Dasmore Wargaming on Twitch. Much appreciated. Um, until next time, happy hobby, y'all.